Hey, this is Michael Quinn here in Greenpoint, Brooklyn at Paulie G's. This is my favorite pizzeria, this side of Brooklyn. Let's head inside. Hey, Paulie G, how's it going, pal? Good, how are you? Good, I love this spot, by the way. Oh, thank thanks for you. having me. First time here? Uh, many times. Oh, this is, whenever I'm this end of Brooklyn, I always make, make it a point to come here. First time with you, though. Have a seat. Yeah, thanks. So you grew up here in Greenpoint? No. No, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Kensington. Kensington, Kensington. near Windsor Terrace? Yes. My father grew up in Windsor Terrace. So how'd you end up uh, here in Greenpoint with the original pizzeria? The pizza shop. Oh, that's actually a restaurant, more of a sit-down restaurant, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. Um, it's, it's a very long story. We moved out to central New Jersey in 1983, and I was in the corporate world. I was doing stuff I wasn't really made to do, but it was paying the bills, barely. Okay, well, at least some of the bills. Yeah. And uh, eventually I just had to, long story short, I had to make a transition into something else. And at first I was going to do it in New Jersey because I was going to try to keep my corporate job and get the place open while I was doing that. And, and that, you know, I figured out that I could probably come here where I really wanted to be in the first place. You know, draw, you know, draw enough salary to pay the bills. And I started looking around, and again, another long story short, I got a lot of long stories. Yeah. Um, I found Greenpoint. I wanted to be in Williamsburg, and there were a couple of reasons that wasn't going to work for me. One being the rent, another being a couple of people who like helped me out and gave me advice, who were also in Williamsburg selling, serving pizza. So I said, I got to find the next neighborhood, and I found the next neighborhood. When you opened up the original restaurant, there were a lot of changes in this area, right? It was, it was a lot different than it was. Yeah, when I got here, there were hardly any restaurants at all. There were a few bars, and it was, you know, the neighborhood was getting nicer. It was, it was a little rougher, but it, it started changing, but it was just bars, and there was no food, and there was certainly no pizza. And, you know, people in Greenpoint, they wanted to have something like what we opened up, and they really embraced us very fortunate but I saw on, my, on the corner of Greenpoint and Franklin I saw what it was going to look like today 13 years ago. 13 you did you could see that. Now when you opened the original restaurant was it a success right away? Was, was it instant? Did it take yeah a few yes and no okay uh, it became a success when I was able to serve alcohol which took me about five and a half months until then you know it was, it was a bit rough people didn't want to come in because you can't do BYO unless you already have a liquor license yeah. and we were working on getting a liquor license and uh, when we finally got it everything doubled overnight yeah. you know, I had built up my reputation in social media before that so I had people coming in pizza enthusiasts and, and again the neighbors the community embraced us but once we started serving out that was the change. So you have this successful restaurant, sit-down restaurant, more formal than this one. What made you decide to open up the Slice Shop? Well, Neapolitan-style pizza, which is what we serve in the wood fired place, um, doesn't travel very well. We were doing takeout, and it was about 15% of our business for about four years. But I knew that what people were taking home and you know maybe saying, that if I say, hey, I got Paulie G's pizza, wasn't the way it should be served. And I waited to the point where I felt I could afford to cut it out. I thought I'd make up for it in other ways, like getting people to come in to eat it and drink, you know, drink my beer and wine rather than the beer and wine they get from the, the liquor store, right? But uh, it didn't happen right away, but I, I just decided to cut it. It was, um, you know, the last straw was when um, somebody pulled up on a bicycle you know, to pick up seven pies. I said, oh, you got, you got a party in the neighborhood here? And they say, no, I, I, um, I work for a delivery thing, right? I said, oh, really? Where are you going? They said, Stuyvesant Town. Now, if you could swim, and the bike, you know, went through the water, you'd be in Stuyvesant Town pretty quickly, but that pizza was going to go all the way down the Williamsburg Bridge and all the way back. I said, you know what? I'm done. And I pulled the plug on it, and, and I knew I was leaving money on the table, I was disappointing people because people were used to coming and getting the pies, going to Transmitter Park, going somewhere else to the playground here, wherever. And I said, I got to do something. I, 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 there was a little place around the corner, a little slice shop. I said, let me see if I can buy that place. Maybe the guy wants to sell. And for a while, 
He said he wanted to sell, but he really didn't, or he didn't have the power to. Maybe he was, you know, the, or the landlord said, don't sell to him because I'm going to get rid of the building or whatever. And then I said, well, at that point, I had this vision of creating a, an old school 60s, 70s slice shop, and nothing was going to stop me at that point. I told the guy, listen, I said, please, if, if, if sell to me because if you don't, I'm opening up somewhere else and it's going to hurt you. And that's what happened. Here so, I am. So, Paulie, growing up in Kensington, Brooklyn, the 60s, that's old school Brooklyn. It's as old school as you get. Uh, were any pizza places, pizzerias around there that influenced you or kind of was the prototype for this one? Absolutely. There's something called the pizza cognition theory. I don't know if you know what that is, but you're going to learn if you don't. Uh, the pizza that you have first is the pizza that tastes best to you for the rest of your life. And there was a little place, right? I, I lived near the it's section of Church of McDonald's. And there was a little 10-foot wide pizzeria. I think it was called Sal's. I don't know. I thought it was called the Leaning Tower of Pizza because there was a Leaning Tower of Pizza in yeah. there. And that New York style slice of pizza to this day is something I absolutely love. And um, there was another place. It was called Corner Pizza with a K. They opened up in 1966. Okay. And it was the same kind of pizza. And that, that's, that was pizza to me until the mid-90s when I discovered coal oven pizza, wood fire pizza. But that place looked like this. They had the orange boots. I could show you a picture of it. A map of Sicily like we have up front here. I, I, model, I modeled it after that. It's funny you say that about the first slice of pizza that you eat. You always remember that, right? I grew up in southern Brooklyn. There was a place called John's Pizza. 20-something years later, close to 30 years later, I went to this place called Royal Pizzeria, which was on 3rd Avenue and 41st Street. I took one bite of that pizza, I said, this is Brooklyn pizza. And the owner looks at me and he goes, it's funny you say that. I had a pizzeria in the early 70s in southern Brooklyn. And I sold it to this guy, John. I taught him how to make pizza. Really? So just to your point, that the first pizza you have as a child, it's almost like the first hot dog or the first egg cream you have. You always remember that taste, that flavor. And in your sense, it seems like you wanted to kind of relive that, those childhood memories of Brooklyn in a sense. I did. And I, and I saw that there was, a, you know, people wanted to have pizza to go. And, and, and I just got to build this, this whole thing. It was a real passion project for me. Yeah. Yes. So you took some liberties here uh, as far as, you know, not traditional plain slice. Now, I always call it a plain slice. Some people call it cheese. I get very annoyed at them. I, I call it plain or just a regular slice. But you have some interesting names here. You got Freddie Prince, Freddie Pepperoni, Hellboy. Were these uh, certain uh, toppings or that you came up with? Or I like to serve here classic pizza, classic toppings. Over in our wood fire place, I experimented more. I like to uh, contrast sweet and savory. But uh, I had a slice of uh, pie over there, the Hellboy, made with Mike's Hot Honey. Mike's Hot Honey. That. Um, it was very popular, and I said, yeah. well, yeah, I'm going to have a pepperoni slice here. It also has Mike's Hot Honey, and it will pull yeah. the Hellboy. So that was the one variation we had. And then I started doing some other things. The Freddie Prince, okay, I, that is an homage to two places, okay. Um, I wanted to put sesame seeds on the bottom of our Sicilian pizza. There's a place in Whitestone, Queens, called Freddy's, and he did that. I went and I asked permission. Uh, I thought it would be a nice thing to do it, just to want to steal the idea. Yeah. And he even helped tell us the best way to do that. And so I pay homage to him, thus Freddie in the name. The other thing, was it's an upside down Sicilian slice, which my favorite one at the time was in a place called Prince Street Pizza. Uh, and uh, so I called it the Freddie Prince. But they did some things that I didn't approve of at Prince Street Pizza. And uh, I decided to change the name to the to Freddie Prince because that's really kind of what it sounded like anyway. That was the idea, yeah. you know. Um, and actually, one day Freddie Prince Jr. came in to have a slice. Oh, that's, he, that's, he, that's I think neat. He was filming in the neighborhood, uh -huh. and he heard that we had a slice named after him, and, and he what came in. What did he say? What do you think about the slice named I mean, after him? He liked the slice. He I wasn't here, unfortunately. Oh, okay. the slice. oh look at that! Look at that! Look at that. I haven't eaten today. I wasn't going to yeah. eat for a while. Yeah. I just planned a ski trip to the French Alps. And I got to yeah. lose 20 pounds in two months. Good. Think I could do it? This so. looks very fresh right out of the oven. It is. I'm going to get one for myself, too. I'll be right back. How's that? Uh -huh. Yeah. Please do. I hope you can edit all this. Yeah, you can. You can. Get a close up. Jeez. This is. You can't get more fresh than this. This is right out of the oven. Very full of cheese. 
I'll try a little bite, but I'm gonna burn my tongue, so you're gonna have to give me another couple minutes to take the second bite. Mmm. Oh, sauce too. My God. So this is the consummate Brooklyn slice. Brooklyn's thin crust, fresh cheese. Just the right amount of sauce. Not too much sauce. You know, you go to other places like Connecticut. They just load it with sauce, but they're kind of like there's not much cheese on it. So it's just well even cheese sauce ratio. And that's the um, this one is the uh, the white. That's the mutz. The mutz. Yeah, that's. You know, it's, right. it's called mutz. Not white. Not, it's not, mutz. Not mutz. Not mutz. Mutz. Mutz is something you have around Passover. You put butter on it, maybe a little salt. <laughs> mutz is 1 0. This is 2 0. Okay. Oh. I do like this. But I'm not having a plain, it goes to cheese, plain slice. I, I'm going to have the mutz. Sometimes they call it. The white? Or this is the no mutt. regret. The mutt. There's no, there's no regret. regret. Oh, that's the difference. No regret. Mmm. Mmm. Um, do you add extra garlic for this one? I add, we put garlic. Yeah, I can taste more garlic than than um than a regular white. So it's it's because it's not a white. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's different. It's garlic. Romano. Uh -huh. You know, garlic, romano, and. Uh, so this one I haven't had before. I had your, your plain or your cold cheese, but I haven't had this one before. It's very good. Now the thing I mean, the thing I like about Quali G's, it's he's not striving to be anything more than than um, you know. Other people just go like you know, they put superfluous amount of toppings or just try to change or reinvent the wheel. This to me is a classic New York, or I would say even Brooklyn slice. You know, it's classic New York. And obviously the fact that he grew up in Brooklyn, in Kensington, and um, he was pretty much influenced by by the pizza that he first had as a kid growing up in Brooklyn, you know? And I like that because you don't see too many, many people they moved here, they not didn't have a, didn't grow up in Brooklyn, they didn't grow up in New York. And they try to create something, you know, or, or they haven't lived it, right? But you lived it, you grew up on this type of pizza, and you're basically replicating what you remember as a kid. You're bringing back those memories. Some things you don't have to change. Some things you don't have to change. Uh, a, a good burger is a good example mm -hmm. of that. You look at a Shake Shack burger. Mm -hmm. That's the same burger that people had all over the country. Just the same classic thing. Good burger is ground chuck. It's a good piece of ground chuck and you broil it or put it. It's all how it's prepared sometimes. Now what do you think? Now, I mean, there's certain places like, of course it's, it's, it's both. But you see it more of how it's prepared or the ingredients that makes the consummate pie. Obviously, you have to have great ingredients. You can't have, you have to have, but what's the difference between, it's 50-50, it's, it's right? You have, to, you have to make the dough properly, you gotta stretch it properly, uh -huh. and you gotta use, um, gotta use great ingredients. We use, and, and, and for me, it's simplicity. Mm -hmm. We use tomato magic by Stanislaus. Mm -hmm. we, we hit it with an immersion blender. And that's it. No seasoning. We don't need any salt. We don't need anything. Okay? No oregano. If you want to put oregano on later, I used to do that a lot. I like that. I forgot to do that. Now. But, and the cheese is just straight, you know, grande mozzarella. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it doesn't need any salt. The salt comes from the cheese. And it blends with the... Um, yeah. Simplicity works it. best. Especially here in New York. So what do we have here? Well, this, this looks pretty prince with okay. the sesame seeds well, on the bottom. Before, okay. Sesame seeds on the yeah, bottom. The on the side. Oh Look my God! That. Yeah. Oh yeah. Baby. You don't see that often. Oh yeah. Wow. Cheese coming through. Nice. That's a lot of cheese. A little bit of cheese. Very generous with the cheese here. This. Oh look at this. Yep. Look when it pulls. Look at that. Oh look at that. Get one good bite of this. Wow. Oh my God, that's so good. That's one of the best squares I've ever had. That's incredible. I love it. We modify this one with some pepperoni uh -huh. and Mike's Hot Honey. Mike's Hot Honey. And uh, that's coming up in a minute. Oh, boy. All right, this is it right here. That's a monster of a square right there. I absolutely love pepperoni. It's my favorite topping. And we'll get this out of the way because move over for this. This is so good. I want to take a little piece of this. All right. So tell me about this a little bit. Well, there's the Hellboy squid. Over in our wood fire place, uh, by far our most popular part was the Hellboy made with hot super sada and Mike's hot honey. Mm -hmm. And when we open up a slice up here, I wasn't going to have hot super sada on, on a slice because that's not a classic thing. Yeah, yeah. But 
we went with pepperoni. Oh. And and we put the Mike's Hot this Honey on it. All the hot like, honey. Just like we did over the wood pie place. Nice. Mike, Mike actually started in our kitchen, basically. Really? He created that, that product. Pretty much, he created it at home, but if we were going to serve it, he had to make it in our kitchen for it to be I didn't know that. Proper. That's yeah. some great history. So this That's choir... So basically the bread and fridge with pepperoni and Mike's Hot Honey. So this choir boy, boy is going to have the Hellboy. Oh. Oh, man. Wow. And across, you said it from around the oven. I mean, it's like tastes like it's like cotton candy. The texture, it's so soft. Oh my god. Oh, this is by far my favorite. This is this is a grand slam right here. That's absolutely delicious. Wow. So this is your most popular item. Here, it's it's a bit of a mix. You get a lot of cheese slices. People love the Hellboy Square. They love the regular Hellboy. It, it's you know it's pretty well balanced over here. Paulie, thank you so much for sharing your secrets and the history, and, and this pizza is top-notch. When I think of the classic Brooklyn pizza, Paulie G's, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Thank you very much. It's great so having you. I really appreciate you coming in. The best slice shop in this part of Brooklyn, Paulie G's. This is Michael Quinn, Flavors of New York.